Hello, I'm PR. And I'm Kate. And this is the Midwife Crisis Microsode. Where we answer your questions, answer your emails, look back on prior episodes, and clear up any issues or concerns. Comments, questions, or concerns, as we used to say in kindergarten. There you go. Yeah, we've, we've got a, a pretty good one today. On this microsode, we're addressing, we have actually a really lovely email from Rowena. And Rowena is writing us from Queensland, Australia. Super cool. Hi, Rowena. Hi, Rowena. Hi, Rowena. And anyone who Rowena might be representing. Australia. I love Australia. I just came from Australia a couple of months ago. She didn't take me or any of her children. So no, I I didn't. (laughs) I took I did take my baby's daddy, though. She didn't make us any more siblings. It was was a fun time because that factory is dusty. Anyhow, (laughs) moving on. This email is lovely. Hi, PR, Kate and Megan. You guys remember Megan. She was the midwife on our loss episode. Uh, Megan Constantino, who is amazing. She is quite amazing. And if you aren't familiar with that episode, I suggest you go back and have a listen. So this will be in context for you. And there is some really useful information in that episode. And the email reads, I just want to thank you for your podcast series and especially episode three on loss. If Kate is a baby midwife, then I am a preterm midwife. I am completing my graduate year as a midwife in Queensland, Australia, and just loving it. You go, girl. Yay. This week, I have binged on all four of your episodes, driving to and from all four of my night shifts. On night three, episode three couldn't have come at a better time. I'm working on the maternity ward and had a patient who actually had her rainbow baby a few days ago. So a rainbow baby, if um, you guys don't remember or um, didn't listen to that episode, is basically the baby that comes after your loss. I felt so empowered from listening to your podcast that I spent my break time with her listening to her talk about her daughter who she lost at six months and her other children and her rainbow baby. I think this time supporting this patient's loss, I asked better questions than I had before and felt like I was really with her in her grief and joy. I'm reading her email verbatim. So I just wanted to thank you for opening up my eyes, ears, and heart to helping women through loss and creating a space through my busy night shift to connect with my patient. It was not only a gift to her, but also a gift to myself as a preterm midwife and something I will apply to my practice from now on. I hope to be well-rounded practitioners like the three of you one day, exclamation point, much oxytocin from Rowena. Um, so first of all, Rowena, I'm definitely stealing much oxytocin. Oh, I'm stealing it too. We're definitely. probably going to have to say it now all the time. That oh, is I'm brilliant. getting an oxytocin tattoo. Me, same. All, already. <laughs> um, no, but you are so well-spoken. We are so thankful that you are you know, choosing this path to help care for women. And it sounds like you're already doing a super stellar job. Um, as we sort of talked about on our loss episode, one of the hardest things for people who've been through loss is feeling like they can't talk about it. And so by you talking to this mom who, you know, a lot of people might just look at her and say, well, she's got her baby now. So she must be really happy. You know, she, she now has a baby that's living. And for so many people who've been through loss, that feels bad because they want to acknowledge the baby that they lost and, and that life and that they're still a mom to that baby. So by, you know, talking and engaging with her, I, I can only imagine how awesome that made her feel um, and how validating it was that you made space for her and her baby. And um, I just think that is so, so lovely. So thank you so much for that. I, um, this, you know, we talked about our own losses and we talked about how mine was very early and it wasn't, um, you know, it sort of wasn't something I had planned for and so forth. So I felt a little bit different on this woman who lost her baby at six months that Rowena describes and how Megan, you know, described the birth of her daughter who was born alive. And then, you know, she lost her several hours later. Um, this, this is something that we find very grave in those who are taking care of these women Um, sometimes it's awkward for us because if we haven't had the experience, you're not quite sure where to, 
dive in or if you should dive in or if you are uncomfortable even with loss or death or if you haven't even had that experience as an adult some folks haven't even been around um people who are who have are deceased or perished or whatever never mind babies that can be hard it can be awkward and um I think that you know the information that Megan gave was really helpful. I've learned I learned something from it on all of these every episode that we do, and even now these microsodes, I learned something, and I think that that's what's really important. I'm glad that Rowena was able to take something from it, and I hope that others can too. One thing I will say is that you know you have to feel from do from. Uh, sort of practice from your heart. If you are working in tandem with other providers, nurses, doctors, Mm -hmm. other midwives, you don't try to follow your own lead, not necessarily their lead, because some folks are not comfortable with this. They feel awkward. And that comes off as coolness, not warmth towards the patient, not compassion towards the patient. And so you need to just do what makes you feel like you think the patient what they need and they let the, you can ask, but also just follow their lead. Mm -hmm. Once again, meet them where they are. Absolutely. I think for a lot of healthcare providers dealing with loss in in any aspect, it's really challenging because one of our, one of our things that we try to follow is do no harm. And everyone's so scared they're going to do or say the wrong thing. And and I even still have that fear. Actually, PR and I recently had a patient that we shared together that was going through uh, a tremendously difficult time um, that we had to sort of diagnose together. And it was difficult. And I remember having a moment where I said to myself, oh my gosh, did I say the wrong thing to this Mm. patient? And uh, having the sport of PR and also sort of just talking it out with the patient and saying, I am so tremendously sorry. And, uh, you know, meeting her where she was, she was dealing with it with a lot of humor. And I think a lot of people were a little uncomfortable with that. And I was like, listen, this is the way she wants to deal with it. So, so we're going to try to kind of make light of it for right now. And, and there's never any good in these situations. You're never going to make it better. You're never going to fix it for the person. And I think as a healthcare provider, we try so hard to fix, right? I mean, and I don't know about anyone else out there who's a provider, but also in your personal life, a lot of times you pick some projects, right? You date that person and you're like, they're a mess and I'm going to help them. <laughs> um, and that's how I, I pick a lot of my friends <laughs> and, and you know, partners. But uh, anyway, I, I think the most important thing to know is you're not going to be able to fix this. You're not going to be able to take it back. And so all you can do is ride through it with them and let them feel whatever they're going to feel, acknowledge things, you know, be, just be with them. Don't be scared to be with this person because even if they are not a lot, uh, even if they're not engaging a lot, right, mm-hmm. they may still need you to just be there, mm-hmm. to just Your quietly presence. be there. Your presence, knowing that they're not alone, um, all of that is so huge. And in my experience, you know, my nursing and midwifery experience, most patients who go through difficult times just appreciate that you, that you tried, you know? That you tried. Yeah, they, they really do appreciate the effort. And they know that it's not an easy, most patients know that it's not easy what they're going through and it's not easy for you to kind of address them. And so they just appreciate your effort. And um, what they don't appreciate is just um, coldness and just kind of, uh, okay, I'm sorry, bye. Yep. And just walking away. And so um, because you are so uncomfortable yourself that you can't even face it. That's right. And so um, just make that little bit of extra effort to try to um do what you what you would want try to put yourself in that in those shoes and say this is how even if you would just want a hug and not to be spoken to that's right just try to then then reach out and do that as I did with that same patient I said to her can I have a hug and then it occurred to me immediately what are you asking her for a hug for give her a hug (laughs) I said to her can I give you a hug and so it was in that split second and she kind of laughed she thought the whole thing was funny I said no I'm giving you I'm not taking from you that's how it's supposed to go and I am sure that she appreciated your self your self correction you know you caught yourself and and you and you did that and I think that's huge and and definitely Rowena the fact that you acknowledged this woman's um, baby that was lost is 
is so incredible. I know recently, uh, Megan, who you addressed in the email as well, had gone on vacation and she sent me a picture. She was on the beach and she wrote snowdrop um, in the sand. And that's what I always refer to my pregnancy loss as. Um, and it meant a lot to me because, you know, it's something that I don't get to share every day. I don't get to wear. I don't get to pick that baby up off the bus. But she remembered and she acknowledged that baby for me. And so making space for people is just is so huge. And so we thank you so, so much. That's a beautiful thing. That's a really beautiful thing. She's a nice girl. And so we're looking forward to hearing more responses um, to our podcast like this so that we can create more um, microsos that we can respond to everyone, to our listening audience in the way that they would like to, in, with information that you would like to hear. That's right. So if you want to reach us, you can uh, get us on our email at midwifecrisispodcast at gmail.com, as well as the Midwife Crisis Podcast on Instagram and Facebook and we'll be right back after this. Greetings and this is Wine Time with Grown Ass Woman an intergenerational conversation with Ife Michelle I'm sexy and Sharon Leanne <laughs> you make me want to add a, a name <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you hit us up. We want to hear from you. Um, again, our email is gawomenspeak at gmail.com. And we're back. Yes, welcome back. You are listening to the Midwife Crisis Podcast Microsode. And I am going to introduce a little piece of our microsode that I'm calling up the follow-up visit. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been seen at the provider, maybe started on some birth control pills and you need a follow-up visit. So this is a follow-up visit um, coming back to our masturbation episode. So um, I just wanted to touch briefly again. I had talked on that episode a little bit about the um, pornographic actress Nina Hartley, and I really did not do her a lot of justice. So I want to talk a little bit about her just for a brief moment. So nice. yeah, Nina is one of the premier voices in feminist porn, healthy sexuality education and sexual freedom advocacy. She's uh, an adult film star as well as director. She's been in more than a thousand combined credits for acting and directing. Um, she has written a book called Nina Hartley's Guide to Total Sex. She played the wife of William H. Macy's character in Boogie Nights. And and she also has an Adam and Eve sex ed series that she directed with her husband called the Nina Hartley Guides. Um, she is indeed a bachelor's prepared nurse, and she did kind of crowdfund to get her hysterectomy, not for endometriosis, but for fibroids. So um, fibroids, for people who don't know, are basically uh, benign growths that you can have uh, that can cause a lot of pain, a lot of bleeding. They can actually also cause your uterus to look really large. So in Nina's case, you know, she was this woman in her 40s and 50s that looked, you know, 20 weeks pregnant. And mm. so because healthcare is not always the best, um, and even with insurance, we a lot of times still have large, you know, hospitalization costs and the cost for being out of work. And especially for someone who um, is a sex worker by trade, you know, she was going to minimally be out of work for six weeks. And so she kind of did a little bit of fundraising, raised almost uh, the full amount of money that she needed for her surgery, and then had her surgery um, and is doing great. She looks fabulous. She's still hot as hell in her 50s, smart, funny, um, and she's a cool check so yeah hey, i want to be like that girl you are like that yeah anyway yes. so i just wanted to touch a little bit on that about nina cool thanks for that follow-up visit and you if you're ever recommended to have a follow-up visit this is a public service announcement go to your follow-up visit that is true because when we ask you to do that and you don't do it we don't like that <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna tell you invariably something goes awry afterwards something goes wrong and then we say you didn't come to your follow-up visit did you mm -hmm. so that That's was true. my public service announcement i like that and especially it's not just visits it's also uh i see it with imaging a lot so a lot of times we recommend a follow-up ultrasound in three months uh breast imaging mammogram six month follow-up so really really guys ladies gentlemen everyone, the whole community, um, make sure that you keep and make those follow-up visits because they are important. I promise we're not just trying to, to get paid. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Uh, we have another, this one is an email uh, coming from 
we didn't keep her name in here because we it's did, a because little it'll it'll make her a little bit identifiable and we don't want to do that we want to keep her anonymous but she's wonderful back to that health room box it's totally anonymous so That's we have right. been saying people's first names there's probably a lot of you know people and yeah and then right. Right. So right. <laughs> but so this one we're keeping totally anonymous we are uh i'm going to read it hi i'm in a an aspiring midwife attending university and recently discovered your podcast on Spotify. I hope to hear more from you soon. Your recent episode on female masturbation helped me so much to explore my own body as I grew up in a religious home and I have been uncomfortable with my own self-pleasure ever since. Thank you for the insightful podcast. I hope you continue to educate women. Thank you so much. That nothing makes me happier than to hear that something that we did helped someone, especially in that way, right? In in that self care type of way. Yeah, that it altered, uh, that it altered a behavior in a positive way. That um, that there was learning that went on because that's part of our goal here, and that's the goal of most part of uh, the profession of midwifery is to educate. And so that if you took some of our education and and uh, sort of adopted and adapted it and assimilated into your own lifestyle and it has and you feel like it has helped you, then we have done good work. Right. Even if we haven't laid hands on you. And so I yeah. feel positive in that way. Midwifery is also about wellness, right? And so I think sexual health is such a huge part of our wellness. And so, you know, just like we talked about in the masturbation episode, there are certainly some people who, you know, maybe identify as asexual, who just have no interest in sex or are really happy with a potentially, you know, sexless, whether it's with a partner, without a partner, it doesn't matter. You know, they, they don't need that in their lives. And if that's you you go, you know, that's awesome. Good for you. But for people who are searching for that or who are hoping to have that satisfaction or who need to relax or need a release or just want to feel good or get to know their bodies, um, masturbation is huge. It's so important. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to, I was worried after the masturbation episode that I had sort of mentioned, you know, Catholicism and, and that potentially impacting people's, uh, the way that they look at their own sexuality. Um, but I think it's partially true. And I think in a lot of ways that is hopefully reforming and hopefully there's more people like this listener who are sort of overcoming that if, if that's what they choose to do. And I'm just, I'm really excited for her. I hope she reached the O. I think, that, <laughs> yes, I think there are ways to also incorporate there. They don't have to be opposing your, your faith does not to have to oppose your self care and your self pleasure. Um, you know, people, they pray in the morning and they pray at night and they meditate or, and, or meditate, um, different times of the day, that kind of thing. And so this is sort of a form of the same thing. You know, lots of endorphins are released with masturbation, with self-stimulation. And so it's kind of a way of, uh, getting your day sort of started with, um, some self-care, with pleasure, with uh, if you're alone, it's giving yourself a hug mm -hmm. or at night giving yourself a tuck in to bed. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it kind of like that and not as something uh, unclean un and, and not in uh, d dirty, if you don't if you look at it with a positive light. Um, I think that changes just the experience altogether. But listen, if you want to be dirty, too, I am here for that. Oh, she's always here for, she's here for, <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> I will wash my hands first. No Purell. That, that would be a mistake. Yeah. No, um, and also since we recorded that masturbation episode, I did just want to give you guys a quick update on something cool that I discovered, which is if you are already, um, you know, achieving sexual satisfaction, whether you're with yourself or with a partner, um, for my birthday this year, my partner got me a subscription to a website called Oh My God, Yes. And oh, that makes my gift seem so trite. No, your <laughs> gift was perfect. We had an amazing brunch. We had a nice bottle of wine. It we was did. it was amazing. It was good. We felt like um, you know, special. We were very special. We also ate like 4,000 calories. We did. But and, that, we, and that was self-care. And in our fancy um dresses, That's pretty right. dress. We That's went, right. we had a little pretty dress gathering of two. 
Yes, we did. Um, but anyway, so Oh My God, Yes, and if, if you guys haven't heard about it, is a um, subscription service to a website that so far has two seasons of information. And it's basically funded research on women's pleasure. So it's research done specifically for women, about women, about making your pleasure better, you know, and about having even better sex, whether that's with yourself, with a partner. Um, and, you know, I've been with my partner for 17 years and it was kind of fun. And I remember th- kind of logging on for the first time and thinking, oh my gosh, okay, there's videos and there's demonstrations and this might be a little bit much. Um, you know, as a queer person, I was kind of like, is this going to be, you know, this is women pleasuring themselves. This is going to be like porn to me. Um, but it's really not. It's an educational piece. It's women showing you how to do all different types of things. So um, some I'm of subscribing. It, you should subscribe. <laughs> and listen, this is not paid for, although we would love that sponsorship. Oh my God, yes. Oh my yeah, God, yes. Yeah. Yes, we would. Um, But anyway, it's women talking about things like uh, edging and uh, multiple orgasms and all different sort of techniques and ways to kind of like spice things up, like to breathe a little bit more life into your sex life. Um, And so I found it really cool. I thought you guys might like it, too. So if you want to check that out, it's called Oh My God, Yes. OMG, yes. Wow. Yeah. You don't want that one. All right. And so the last email um, or message that we got actually by Facebook was uh, from Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. And she wrote, hey, Kate and PR, I love listening to your podcast so far. And as a VBAC mama, I'd love to hear about your own delivery experiences on VBAC and VBAC seeking patients. So thank you so much for reaching out to us, Elizabeth. And we have some good news for you. Go ahead, PR. We are going to do a full episode on the subject matter of vaginal birth after cesarean and and trial of labor after cesarean because it's it's so robust we we didn't want to just address it in a a micro sode we felt like so many folks would be interested in it and want the information and so we're going to do a deep dive and um, produce an entire episode on that so um, thank you for that suggestion elizabeth and we hope we're going to get your answers Um, in the very near future. And we hope we're going to give you really just a a real big perspective on it, a wide perspective, a wide view on, um, on what that's all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's a discussion that we love to have and you, you know, you might be surprised. I mean, we lean all kinds of ways because what do we do? We meet people where they are. That's right. So you might assume that, you know, midwives are going to say, definitely you should have a vaginal birth. Sometimes we do. And sometimes we don't. It just depends on the circumstances. So we look at the total picture because our job is to take the best care that we can for our patients. Um, I think that's pretty much it, unless you have another comment. We'd like to thank, once again, our village, our families, our partners, our children. And we'd like to thank Rev Kev and Baobab Studios. And... Yeah. Any, anybody else who cares about us. And we really thank you guys for reaching out to us. We hope you continue to do so. We want to hear from you. So if you want to hear uh, back from us and maybe get featured on one of our microsodes or even maybe a full episode, Elizabeth, um, sure. you can reach us at Midwife Crisis Podcast at gmail.com or on our Instagram and Facebook at The Midwife Crisis Podcast. Um, send us a message, send us a DM, send us a link, whatever you want us to talk about. We are here for you. Yes, we are. And wash your hands. Much oxytocin. Bye.